In this last video, we're going to look at one more velocity application. Here we're told that a data collection probe is dropped from a stationary balloon and it falls with velocity in meters per second given by V of t equals 9.8 t neglecting air resistance. After 10 seconds, a chute deploys and the probe immediately slows down to a constant speed of 10 meters per second, which it maintains until it enters the ocean. So we're asked to graph this velocity function so we can get an idea of what it looks like and then answer a couple of questions about this probe. So let's look at graphing that velocity function first. Notice that my velocity function is actually piecewise, where it's equal to 9.8 t up to 10 seconds, and then equal to 10 um, for t greater than 10. So it's actually for t greater than 10 and less than some time, let's call this this unknown time here, some time b, where t equals b is when the probe enters the ocean and for the first 10 seconds here we have this velocity of 9.8 t. So we have a linear um, velocity here for the first 10 seconds. We're at 10 seconds I've got this um, velocity of 98 meters per second. Then at 10 seconds it drops to um, the speed of just 10 meters per second. So we have this, this um, function that we're working with here. So let's look at answering a couple questions. So part B asks us, how far does the probe fall in the first 30 seconds after it is released? So this is a question that's about distance, and it's talking about um, how far something falls um, over an interval. So this is a, a net change um, type of problem here. Um, it's worth noting that distance equals displacement here. Since our velocity is um, positive, then we're moving in the same direction as our velocity. So to answer this question about how far the probe falls in the first 30 seconds, we're looking at taking an integral from 0 to 30 of our um, velocity here. So we can do this with um, some geometry of the, the problem. Now that we have the graph right in front of us, we're looking at finding um, the area of a triangle plus the area of this, this rectangle. Or we can look at writing out what this, um, this integral is in terms of the function. So we can look at it both ways. So notice to integrate my velocity function, because it's piecewise, I'd have to split this integral up into the integral from 0 to 10 of 9.8t dt plus the integral from 10 to 30 of 10 um, dt here. So the integral from 0 to 10 of 9.8 t would be 9.8 t squared over 2 um, evaluated from 0 to 10. And then I'd have 10 t here evaluated from 10 to um, 30. So notice that I could also, I can plug these in and, and evaluate the arithmetic, but I can also see that the integral from 0 to 10 here, um, well that's going to be equal to uh, the area of a triangle which will be 1 half base um, times height. So that will also be equal to exactly what we have above, it's just a little quicker to do that um, arithmetic. The area then of this piece here, okay, well this is a rectangle with height 10. If I'm going up to um, 30 seconds here, this would be um, 10 times 30 minus 10 or times 20. So we're looking at 980 divided by 2, which is 490 plus 200. So we have um, this total distance that this probe um, is going to fall in the first 30 seconds of 690 meters. Okay. So let's look at answering our last question here. So we found that over the first 30 seconds, this probe fell 690 meters. What about... Um, trying to figure out the answer to this next question here where it says if the probe was released from an altitude of three kilometers when does it enter the ocean? So this part C is just a little different kind of question than we've been asked before. We're given some initial um, value information but we're asked to um, find a time instead of to find um, a, a position information. So we're told the probe was released from this altitude of three kilometers. So we know that 
um, s of zero here is equal to three kilometers. Notice that everything else in this problem is in terms of meters, so we're gonna need to convert that three kilometers in terms of meters, since our, our velocity is in terms of meters per second that we've been working with. So we've got this initial um, height here of 3,000 meters. So that means if my, my probe here is released from an altitude of 3,000 meters, it has to travel 3,000 meters um, in order to enter the ocean. So we know it was still traveling at 30 seconds, so we're trying to find um, this unknown time B here when it will actually enter the ocean. So we know that over the time interval from 0 to B, our probe must be traveling um, 3,000 um, meters here. So to rephrase this question about if it was released from this altitude of three kilometers, when does it enter the ocean? We want to know how long does it take the probe to travel 3,000 meters. Okay, well so in this case instead of trying to solve for um, a distance, we have a distance and we're trying to solve for a time. So we have the equation that 3,000 meters will be the, the distance traveled over the um, integral from zero up to some time b of v of t. So we're looking at 3,000 equals an integral from zero to 10 of 9.8 t dt plus an integral from 10 to b of 10 dt and we're trying to solve for the time t equals b. So we have 3,000 here equals our integral from 0 to 10 of 9.8 t dt, which we know from earlier is equal to 490, plus this integral from 10 to b of 10 dt, which will be 10 times b minus 10. So now subtracting 490 from both sides, we have, um, let's see, 25 10 here is equal to 10 times b minus 10 divide both sides by 10 we have 251 equals b minus 10 or b is equal to 261 so the probe enters the ocean at 261 seconds after being released